Uh, even when it's busy, there's maybe 15 climbers on the highway. It's not like that at the big areas. There's, there's a lot of people at the big areas, and you have to wait in line a lot for climbs that you might want to do, and you, don't, you just don't find that here. You have the place to yourself. And uh, there's a very high aesthetic quality to the climbing here compared to other areas. And um, especially the last few years, I've climbed at most of the popular areas that you read about in the magazines now. And several of them have very good climbing, but they lack uh, the, an aesthetic quality. They lack a history, and that's a big part of the climbing here to me, is the past history of the climbers who have come here and did the things that they've done. We had talked to the uh, fellow in charge of the state park to kind of get permission to climb. And he said it was, my, he said we had mountain goats and mountain sheep, might as well have mountain climbers. <laughs> we appreciate you're not taking pictures. I don't know, I think you can do it without that. And We're not proud of the performance we put on for the camera, I guess, <laughs> put, it, put it that way. When did you first come to the Black Hills then? In 1947 was the first time we were just driving through and we found the, the needles and we're kind of, we, were, we were actually we were set to uh, climb Devil's Tower and couldn't get permission and uh, so we climbed in the needles instead and uh, came back the next year to climb Devil's Tower and climb some more here. I remember we, we climbed one summer and then we went south to Arizona and worked in a dude ranch during the winter thinking about coming back. And uh, Herb kept saying, well, we don't want to make up our mind while we're here whether we're going to settle there or not. We've got to look at it with fresh eyes. And I remember we came back and we took the Harney Peak Trail and came down behind the spires there and looked at all of those towering rocks around us and we said it it's more than just in our head this is the place we want to live how has climbing changed since your guys heyday we weren't the bold kind of climbers that they are today we tended to like the only protection we could get was in a crack and we tended to follow the cracks because we were pretty really pretty chicken we were usually content with going up the easiest way, if we could find an easy way, and uh, some of the pinnacles were harder than others, but there were so many of them we didn't have to look around to, didn't have to look for a harder route on something that had already been climbed. When we got here, we decided that making a first ascent was just a matter of getting there before anybody else did. On, on a long climb, we'd try to alternate, and one person climb up and then the other climb up and pass them and on up and alternate the lead, but... Uh, we each had our we, own we each, specialty, yeah. too. Some, some climbs fit one of us better than others, and we could usually tell by looking at it which, <laughs> which one of us would do better. If it was a skinny crack, Herb had a better chance of getting in it than I did. And if it was a wide chimney, I, would, I could spread further than he could. <laughs> it helps to have big hips because your legs start so far apart. <laughs> what kind of shoes did you use? Tennis shoes, dollar right. ninety nine. You <laughs> started off with a not, um, Manila rope, three dollars and fifty cents for one hundred and twenty feet of it, or something, and a pair of sneakers, and that was was about it. So basically that's all you, you had was pitons, your shoes, tennis shoes, and a manila rope. Yeah. And we, we and started using nylon before we came here. Right after the war we managed to get a hold of the nylon ropes. And, and and the rope was just tied round your waist with a bowl and none of these swami seats or anything of that sort. So you really did not want to fall. Because Take, taking a long fall could, could really... could break your back. I mean, if you fell more than 15 feet, it, it didn't matter what, how good your gear was, because <laughs> you'd probably break your back anyway. So you're 
kind of cautious. Did you ever have many falls? No. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't sound safe to us. <laughs> <laughs> Until they got nylon ropes. The rope was the weak yeah. link. The, the manila didn't stretch like nylon does. And if you fell very far, it would just it was pretty sure to snap the rope. Especially if the rope was old at all, because it's a natural fiber, and it, it dies. And after a year or two, you had to fork out another $3.50. <laughs> do you still climb? Do you still do any rock climbing? We do a little bit of scrambling. We don't usually get, the, get a rope out. It's still fun when your hands come into play and you've got a little bit of a drop beneath your feet, but I mean, it, there's a special kick to that. And uh, certainly the climbing was something that always seemed very natural to us. I mean, we just, it just felt like we were coming home the first time we ever climbed. <laughs> 